So Lord, why is it that no matter what century and no matter what people group, why is it that they're so hated? I think it comes down to spiritual reasons. Our enemy, Lord, Satan, he despises Jews and Israel because this is where you brought forth the Messiah. You chose the Jewish people uh, to sanctify them from the world, to set them apart from the world and give them a set of laws that they would follow to make them look different and holy and apart from the world, the rest of the world. And it was through that lineage that you brought forth your son, Jesus, and he was born in Israel. He was born from Jewish descent. And Lord, his mission was to defeat Satan and take back what was stolen uh, from the Garden of Eden. Dear Lord, it's with a humble heart that I pray today and come before you. Lord, it's just been very disturbing to watch the news lately and see what's going on around the world with all this anti-Semitism kind of rearing its ugly head again. It's really disappointing, really. We study about the Holocaust during World War II, about what Hitler did. And, and you know, as a society, we just shake our heads and say, wow, the level of evil during that time was unprecedented. How can mankind be so evil? And uh, But we look back on those days like, like it could never happen again. We look back on those days like, you know, we're better than that now. You know, we're, we're more uh, advanced or morally superior to those people back then. And, and we look at that and say, how could people stand by and let that happen? You know, how, how could there be so much hatred for one people group, and no one did anything about it until, until it was too late, really. But today's a reminder that, that that evil is still there, that that hate is still there. It's one of the oldest forms of hate uh, in all of human history, and the most intense, really, all aimed toward a specific people group. And uh, I was really disappointed to find out that the anti-Semitism started with, quote, Christians. Christians who claim to be followers of Christ and yet have such a vast misunderstanding of what your purpose was here on earth and why you came. Yeah, in the early centuries, like starting around, I guess it was around 300 AD, uh, you know, Christians were persecuting Jews, saying they were Christ killers, saying that they were Jesus murderers, just because someone says they're a Christian doesn't mean they follow you or they can be a self-described Christian that doesn't really follow you or your ways. A true Christian, Lord, follows your teachings and surrenders their self-will to your will. And uh, Christians during that day and for the many centuries that followed completely misunderstood what your purpose was here on earth. Lord, you were not murdered. You were not killed. You came to sacrifice yourself for us, for our sinful ways, and to set us free from sin. You voluntarily went to the cross to be obedient to the Father. Now you asked the Father, Lord, if there's any other way that we can restore mankind back to us. But no, Lord, this was the only way, and you voluntarily went to the cross. In fact, Lord, if we just look at our Bibles, there's several instances where like the one case where they came to arrest you, Lord, you know, and uh, one of your disciples uh, took a sword out and tried to defend you <laughs> from going to the cross and uh, cut off the ear of one of the soldiers. And you turned to him and said, don't you know that I could call 12 legions of angels to my defense if I wanted to? They're at my disposal. But this has to be done in order to satisfy the prophecies that I was to come to earth as the Messiah to set people free from their sin. So if there's anyone to blame for Christ having to die on the cross, it would be me. 
It will be you. It will be everyone out there who sins. Yes, Lord, it was us who put you on that cross. And you died because you loved us so much that you were willing to give your life for us. You were willing to shed your blood and go through that horrible torture for us to allow our sins to be forgiven and allow us to be restored back to you. That's why you came. And Lord, you're not dead. You are living today. You were resurrected just as, the, as you foretold three days later. And you walked among the disciples and up to 500 people for 40 days so that they could be witnesses that you were resurrected. And then Lord, before you went back to heaven, you gave us our great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And those who believe and are baptized will be saved. But those who don't believe will perish. And Lord, you said that it's your will that none should perish, but all come to repentance. How can we say they're Christ murderers? You weren't murdered, you were sacrificed. And how can we say they were Christ killers? You're not dead. You rule and reign today at the right hand of the Father. So Lord, forgive us for all those centuries of persecution against the Jewish people, blaming them and blaming the Romans for your, for your death and your burial. No, Lord, it was us we should be blaming. It was our sin that, that nailed you to the cross. It was your love for us that compelled you to go to the cross and to suffer what you did so that your blood could make restitution for our sin and we could be reconciled back to the Father. Lord, you tell us in your word that we were created and you started with Adam and Eve and we're all descendants of Adam and Eve. And then there was a great flood that wiped out the evil people of the world. And we started over with Noah and his family. And so everyone on earth today is a descendant of Noah and his family. And all of the diversity that we see in terms of what people look like, is their skin color, their hair color, their eyes, their attributes. It's all diversity that you've programmed into our ancestors. And uh, as people moved and spread across the earth to different locations and uh, breeded within those subgroups, yeah, we developed different looking people. <laughs> but we're all one race. We're the human race. And uh, racism has no place if you're a follower of Christ. You love all people and you've created all people and you want all people to be redeemed. And we're to love everyone, regardless of what they look like, how they believe, <laughs> their lifestyle. But oh, Lord, this, this was the second big wave of persecution against the Jewish people. And this led to horrible Holocaust where six million Jews were cordoned off and uh, exterminated. Hitler and all of his people were deceived into thinking that this was somehow the right thing to do. And now in recent history, we see the horrible atrocities that Hamas committed uh, in Israel against innocent civilians, children, women, elderly, doing horrible, unspeakable atrocities against them. And, uh, and we just shake our heads and say, how can there be so much hatred? I think even more disturbing is seeing the worldwide outcry against the Jewish people, the demonstrations and the calls to eliminate Israel and eliminate the Jewish people. The pure hatred is just on the full display. And some of these demonstrations right here in the United States, right here on university campuses, are calling for much worse than that. And Lord, it just doesn't make sense. When we look at what evil was perpetrated on those innocent people, and then to turn around and place the blame on the Jewish people, like it was all their fault, just like we blamed the Jewish people for crucifying Christ. So Lord, I know that when things don't seem to be make any sense in the natural, we have to look at the spiritual. And in Ephesians, in Ephesians 6, you say, for our struggle, it's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil 
in heavenly realms. So Lord, when we look at how Christians persecuted the Jews, it makes no sense. If they understood the gospel, how could they persecute the Jews for, quote, killing Christ? That makes no sense. And if we look at what Hitler did, how he believed the lies about evolution and, and that races are inferior and superior, how would he believe that? And how did he go to such lengths and such evil and everybody went along with it? It doesn't make any sense. If you look at what happened today, how the, the evil that was perpetrated against the Jews, the Lord, why is it that no matter what century and no matter what people group, come along and hate the Jews? <laughs> why is it that they're so hated? And Lord, I think it comes down to spiritual reasons. Our enemy, Lord, Satan, <laughs> he despises Jews and Israel because this is where you brought forth the Messiah. This is where he started losing people out of his kingdom because everyone who turns to you, Lord, and is born again, he loses that member of his kingdom and they, they are transferred into your kingdom, your, your kingdom of God. <laughs> and you chose the Jewish people uh, to sanctify them from the world, to set them apart from the world and give them a set of laws that they would follow to make them look different and holy and apart from the world, the rest of the world. And, uh, and it was through that lineage that you brought forth your son, Jesus, and he was born in Israel. He was born from Jewish descent. And Lord, his mission was to defeat Satan and take back what was stolen uh, from the Garden of Eden. You gave us the commission to go into the world and to preach the gospel. And he's doing everything he can to shut that down as well. Because you defeated Satan on the cross. Because you provided a way for individuals to turn to you and to transfer into your kingdom. But Satan is still affecting the world. He's not in prison yet <laughs> until you come back a second time. He knows his time is short. He knows that things are, are nearing those days when you're going to return. So he's amping up his hatred. And he somehow foolishly believes that if he can eliminate Israel, where you're supposed to return to, and if he can eliminate the Jewish people, <laughs> somehow it'll delay you returning or it will prevent you from returning. Well, Lord, you told us there's going to be two things that have to happen before you return. Number one, that the gospel will be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. And this day and age, we're seeing the gospel preached in many, many places, but there's not every single place that I've heard about you yet. And uh, Satan is doing his best to prevent that word from being spread and uh, persecution of Christians and people who share the gospel. The second thing you said in Zechariah, that in the last days, the Jewish people would realize that you were the Messiah, you know, and that they would mourn and realize that they uh, rejected you and they would then turn to you and receive you as their Lord and Savior. It's going to be the Holy Spirit that draws the Jewish people to repentance. And uh, the message for everyone is that it doesn't matter whether you're Jew, Arab, you know, whether you're <laughs> whatever country you're from, whatever culture you're from, it doesn't matter. The answer is the same. We all need to repent of our sin and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ who provided the way back to the Father. He provided the way for us to have eternal life and uh, not perish. It's a call to everyone. And if you're not born again and you're not walking in his kingdom, that time is short and Jesus could return any day. And when he returns, it's going to be too late for those who haven't made that decision. So don't, don't delay. We don't know how many days on earth we have. People die every single day. Jesus could come back tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, so don't delay and don't tarry. Repent of your sins. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Be baptized in water in his name and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This was the formula that Peter preached to the Jews, the same Jews that crucified Jesus Christ. He preached this message on the day of Pentecost. And on that day, 3,000 Jews turned to Christ and the church was birthed and the church was born. But today we see there's a division. There's many people who have turned to Christ and there's many people who still haven't turned. 
God's will is that none should perish, but all come to repentance. And he's given us time. The reason Jesus hasn't come back yet is because every day more people are being saved. Every day more people are turned to the Lord. But at some point, it will be time for Jesus to return. And you want to make sure you're on the right, in the right kingdom and on the right team and you have the right master. So I encourage you today, if you have questions about this, please leave a comment. Seek it out from someone else. But don't delay. Time is short. And uh, when you see all of this hatred in the world, and you say, what's the matter with people? What's gotten into them? <laughs> well, it's Satan. He knows his time is short. And he is trying to do as much destruction as possible while he still can. And uh, that's what we're seeing manifest in all these different people groups. And this hatred comes from him. God is not a God of hate. He's a God of love. And uh, so every time you see hate, just remember, it's coming from the enemy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today. It's a beautiful day. Thank you for coming along with me. If you like this video, to give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And uh, it helps the algorithm <laughs> to know, to show this video to more people. It helps to get the word out. And uh, I ask you to share it with someone that you think would benefit. Someone you think would, uh, maybe is struggling with, with all of these issues that are happening here in these last days. And uh, not understanding how people can be so evil. And not understanding that there's spiritual forces behind the scenes. Almost like puppeteers pulling the strings. And and deceiving many people and leading them down the wrong path. And we have the Holy Spirit living inside. The Holy Spirit helps us to discern right from wrong, helps us to discern truth from lies, and know that we're on the path to follow, follow Christ. So between the Holy Spirit and God's Word, those two together uh, help keep us on the straight and narrow path following our Lord Jesus. And so uh, I ask you to subscribe to this channel. I'm coming to the end of my 365 mile journey with Jesus. I think I have one more episode to do to complete that challenge. But there will be more after that. More, more hiking videos where we'll go out and spend time with the Lord, admiring His beautiful creation, and uh, just abiding in Him and praying and uh, learning about who He is and what He's done and uh, sharing testimonies with one another. So I invite you to subscribe and Leave me a comment on this video and let me know where you're at with your walk with the Lord. I'd love to hear from you. So then, God bless and uh, have a wonderful, have a wonderful day.